Welcome to a tale of two Stuart S50 steam engines, part 5, a painting video. The attempted paint removal from engine number 2 was a bit of a failure, but at least it is now degreased. In this video I show the repainting of engine number 1, then I show the cleaning up or fettling of the castings for the second engine. After two days in the tub of cellulose thinners, the paint on the parts was still there. This is the factory machine kit, and in this clip the etch primer is drying on the parts I made for the engine. Over now to engine number two. Here it is, and the casting is really rough. The general idea is to fettle the casting using a file, or some sort of a grinder, or even sandpaper, to smooth it out before painting it, not the other way around. I assumed incorrectly that the paint on this engine was ordinary cellulose primer. And the way to completely annihilate that is to sit it in a polythene tub like this and pour cellulose thinners all over it. The flywheel is also a bit rough, so that's in the solvent as well. The plan was to do what you see me doing here and then leave it in the outer part of the workshop because it's very smelly stuff and the outer part of the workshop is far better ventilated than the inner part. I'm going to fill this polythene tub right to the top and completely immerse the parts. The idea being, while the cellulose thinners is doing its stuff and removing this paint, I can paint the other engine. I found a couple of tins of Stuart Green, so the colour match will be fine, and the main reason for repainting this engine is to cover up the fact that I've modified the bearings. In the previous episode, in an absolute frenzy of non-engineering, I made these bearing replacements. And the bearing at the flywheel end is quite special, it's much bigger than the one at the other end. And the reason for this is the fact that the original bearings wore out fairly quickly. The flywheel fitted to this engine is different to the ones that used to be fitted to Stuart S50 engines. I know that because I phoned Stuart models and a man explained that they did use different flywheels these days. That's why I really beefed up the bearing that supports this flywheel. Today I am using a brand new paintbrush. This is a branded paintbrush, so I would expect it to be good. I'm not going to tell you what the brand is, but it is a definite branded paintbrush, not just a cheap one. I decided to open the tin of Stuart Green paint that I'd already used. And inside the tin there wasn't much of it left, but at least it was still liquid, although it was very thick and sticky. I'm going to thin it down very slightly using some white spirit. I don't want to thin this paint too much, so the amount of white spirit that I'm using is very small. This amount was not quite enough, so I added some more and after the addition of a second small amount of white spirit, I thoroughly stirred the mixture with the stick. Had this have been brown paint, I could have asked the question, what's brown and sticky? The answer, of course, is a stick. But with the green paint, that doesn't really work. What's green and sticky? A green stick doesn't have the same impact. In no time at all, the paint is exactly the consistency that I need it to be to paint the engine. Sit back and relax, it's painting time. When painting castings, I like the paint to be slightly thicker than normal. Somehow it gives that painted casting look. This paintbrush is rubbish, it's losing more hair than I normally do. I've never had a paintbrush as bad as this in my life. It's turning shedding bristles into an art form. When I cleaned the brush and then pulled on the bristles, most of them came off in my hand. When I pulled on the bristles for a second time, all of them left the brush and ended up in my hand. Here's what's left of the paintbrush apart from the bristles, just an empty paintbrush, it looks entirely wrong. But eventually I removed every bristle that was stuck to the paint and now the sole plate of the engine looks like this, in the usual gratuitous shot of the paint drying. I still need to paint the black part of the base, but I'll do that once the green paint has dried. I wonder how the paint removal is going in the outer part of the workshop. Well, it's not. 
I decided I couldn't wait any longer. Any paint that isn't removed by the action of cellulose thinners must be well and truly stuck to the metal. I removed the sole plate from the cellulose thinners, dried it off, and here is what it looks like after I fettled it. Originally, this casting was particularly rough around the bottom edge. My one-inch belt sander took care of all that. I finished it off by hand using a piece of emery cloth and I rubbed the casting in the opposite direction to the way the belt sander had done. I also rubbed down the surface of the paint where it was a bit lumpy. First at one side, then I turned it around to do the other side. I would think that the builder of this engine was a proper engineer. A proper engineer who obviously had an aversion to fettling the castings first. It's now the day after and the flywheel is still in the cellulose thinners. And this paint is still attached to the flywheel. How can this be? I will carry on regardless for the moment. In the outer part of the workshop, I'm painting the casting using some etch primer. Normally, I would be concerned about the etch primer reacting with the paint underneath, but I've no worries here. I've no idea what the red primer paint was. All I can say is it's really good stuff. I didn't bother masking off the crosshead guides. All I did was use a little bit of cellulose thinners on a cloth to wipe away the paint from this area. For the second time in this episode, here's a shot of the paint drying. As you can see, in certain areas it's wet and in other areas it's beginning to dry. You may not have noticed, but to paint this part, I placed a piece of wood on top of the tub of cellulose thinners. And when I lift up the piece of wood, the paint is still on the flywheel. That's it, I'm taking the flywheel out of the cellulose thinners and I'll clean it up manually. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.